Yeah. And then uh, if they show up, well, we can't we can't approve that. Couple more minutes. <coughs> I think that. <coughs> We know if anyone's uh, connected online, or is was there not? Oh, there wasn't a. Well, let's let's give it a couple of minutes, Derek, and then. Yeah, I'll start at Do you want to do the roll then too? Good morning, everyone. I'm Michael Burns, chair of the uh, Moorhead EDA, and I call this meeting of November 1st to order. Are there any agenda amendments? Thank you. Amy, would you like to call the roll, please? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members present today include Nate Anderson, Michael Burns, Laura Caroon, James Hand, and Deb White. Thank you. Please note that there is currently not a quorum, so we will um, adjust the agenda accordingly. Any citizens care to wish to address the board? Commissioner's reports. Um, who's going to do the MBA, Sherry? Or you? I'll take it today. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, as a reminder, MBA members meet every Wednesday at the Moorhead American Legion for Let's Talk Business at noon. Uh, this week, Jay Evans with Off, Cover, Off Color Media will be sharing their story. MB, MBA 560 Connect is our after hours networking event. Heralds on Main hosted the October event and we will be at Replay Games on November 19th. The Moorhead Alliance of Nonprofit meets on the last Monday of each month. Friends of the Children shared their story at Moorhead Billiards in October 
and YMCA of Cass Clay counties will be presenting on November 29th. The countdown to Frostival has begun in 2021. Moorhead hosted 18 out of the 42 events that took place in the Metro. At our monthly committee meetings, we make sure businesses are aware of the opportunities they have to get involved with the event, uh, collaborate with other businesses, and apply for financial assistance through the CVB. Moorhead will have, um, will host uh, more than 24 events in 2022. The annual snow sculpture competition draws hundreds to Viking Ship Park and the sculptures continue to wow the community with their talents. Congratulations, Jay Ray and the Snowcraft team whose sculptures will be participating in the world competition next year. Be on the lookout for event sponsorship opportunities. Uh, the NBA annual meeting celebration will be held on Thursday, November 11th at the Courtyard by Marriott. The theme for the night is Rhythm of Resiliency, Finding Joy in Every Beat. The guest speaker is Deb McGregor with the Small Business Development Center. The NBA membership will be voting from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. for two new three-year term board members. This is sure to be an excellent evening celebrating our MBA members. There is a postcard in front of each uh, of our board members uh, with an invite uh, and registration is still uh, an option. So we'd, we'd love to see you there. Um, and uh, that's all for now. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. It's always exciting to hear updates from the MBA. Any other committee reports? Now we'll resume the agenda um, now that we've achieved a quorum. So we'll go back to item number three, which is the approval of last month's meeting minutes. Is there a motion to approve? Thank you. Second. Second. Thanks, Nate. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Pull the same sign. Motion carried. All right, uh, moving into uh, item number six, which is the public hearing and the approval of the resolution to authorize the issuance of revenue bonds to Lakes and Prairies Community Action Partnership. Jim, care to address the board with anything? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Jim Stewart. I'm an attorney with Arns and Stewart and Wagner in Fargo. We're representing Lakes and Prairies Community Action Partnership in connection with their request for financing through the ADA, funds would be used to acquire an office facility on Belsley Boulevard. If you have any questions regarding the project or the financing, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, one important note is that <clears throat> the ADA is strictly a conduit in this process and has no liability. Lakes and Prairies is responsible for repaying all the, the bonds. Um, at the conclusion of the public hearing, we do have a proposed resolution for your consideration that would authorize the issuance of the notes. These are being purchased by Bremer Bank. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Any questions? Yes. Uh, Derek or, um, I apologize. Jim, was it? Yeah. Or Jim, could could one of you talk to us about um, maybe the EDA's involvement in this and like what exactly that process is and, and basically why, uh, as a new board member, I'm just kind of I would like to better understand how this is you know what we're voting on, how how it came to be that type of deal. It's not to question it, just uh, would yeah. like to better understand. No, good question. Um, every state uh, has a, a statute similar to Minnesota's that authorizes um, <clears throat> political subdivisions like cities, counties, in this case the EDA, to issue bonds on behalf of some other private company. And the advantage is that that private company gets the benefit of a tax exempt interest rate. So that's the reason that we're asking EDA to issue the bonds because as a public entity, you can borrow on a tax-exempt basis, 
and then you loan the money to, in this case, Lakes and Prairies, so they get the benefit of that lower interest rate. So that's that's really all we're trying to accomplish here is to give give them a lower interest rate. There is one other feature that, since these bonds are being purchased by Bremer Bank, <clears throat> they want the bonds to be designated as bank qualified, and in order to make that designation, the political subdivision has to reasonably expect to issue less than 10 million in bonds during a calendar year. And so the EDA also fits into that category since you haven't done any of those financings in 2021. <clears throat> so we get the benefit of both the, the tax exemption on the interest and the bank qualification for Bremer. It's very, very specific on who, who we can and what kind of uses those bonds can be issued to as well. Very good expl explanation. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jim. Any other questions? Uh, is there a motion to approve the resolution? Deb White moved to approve. Uh, Alexandre Cusa, second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. All right, uh, Lisa, would you please uh, enlighten us about legislative activities? Thank you, Chair Burns, and thank you, members, for inviting me today to talk about Moorhead's legislative agenda for 2022. The mayor and city council uh, met last week and approved the broad legislative priorities for the city of Moorhead moving into the 2022 um, legislative session. And because the, the issues um, impact the Economic Development Authority's work and that the um, funding to help support this work come from the EDA levy, it's important that we keep um, you folks informed as well. And so just want to, uh, I'm all, and you, I'm always willing to come back and talk about things during the session or at the conclusion of the session too, but as we get ready for 2022, um, there are four uh, policy areas that um, the city of Moorhead is um, interested in pursuing um, with the uh, upcoming legislative session. Um, the and they, they are not in a priority necessarily order um, as, as to how we would make choices between these items because they all kind of fall within different categories. But the, um, the first point on your memorandum is an issue that's really, to my knowledge, has never been on our legislative agenda before, and that is the issue of interstate mutual aid for law enforcement. Minnesota changed its um, standards for use of force um, in the 2020 uh, legislative session, which became effective on um, March 1st of 2021. And it makes um, our state different than the other states. And the impact of that change and the differences in laws and standards between Minnesota and, in our case, North Dakota, has made it so that our North Dakota law enforcement partnerships that have been in place for, for many, many years are, are no longer in place. We've had interstate mutual aid agreements so that when there are major incidents or there are areas of cooperation between the states, that, or, or the cities, an incident that, you know, traverses the border, crime doesn't stop at the border, um, it has made it so that um, the, the standards are enough different that our North Dakota partners have said, we can't assist you um, in, in Minnesota at this time. And we brought this issue to the attention of our legislators as well as the state and uh, the House and Senate Judiciary Committees and we're hoping for a solution. There's also court actions going on at this time with regard to this standard. Um, it's been reversed back to the 20, the, the, pre, uh, the, the, the previous standard, but it's also very, uh, it, it's a temporary injunction. And so without the assurance that this is going to be the standard moving forward, 
North Dakota has not um, resumed these partnerships at this time, although we feel that they're very cooperative and they're evaluating it and that they really genuinely want to um, recreate these partnerships. And so we're, we're looking for a solution to this issue, whether it be, uh, you know, return the law to the way it was, not sure if that's feasible, if that a solution may come out of the courts or um, something that is a hybrid of those. We're wanting to make sure that the issue that has caused this disruption in our city is um, going to be addressed in whatever solutions come forward. And so that is, again, something that has not been on our agenda before, but we feel it's an important issue to the, the, the public safety in Moorhead. So that is one issue. Another on our, our agenda is the Cap Minnesota Capital Investment Program, which has been um, a tremendous resource. Sometimes we talk about, um, you know, the differences in taxation between Minnesota and North Dakota. What One of the things that I'm very proud of is the resources that we get from the state of Minnesota to help us with investment in our community. Um, probably the most notable uh, success in that regard is the 2020 bonding bill in which the city of Moorhead received $65 million toward the 11th Street underpass. And over time, since 2009, they've invested millions and millions in flood control in Moorhead. And that is the basis of the full request for 2022 would be um, flood control. We have about $17.5 million left in infrastructure needs to wrap up the, um, the mitigation needed that is compatible with the FM di diversion, but protects the local infrastructure and the homes that remain um, within the floodplain. And so we um, have gotten smaller pots of money as time has gone, but with concentrating our request um, to, to one primary issue in 2022, we're hopeful we can make great progress toward achieving um, all or most of the requests that infrastructure requests that are pending. And if you're curious about this, um, there's more detail about which there's, um, there's a, a, a couple lift stations, there's a flood wall, there's raising a road and um, the North Moorhead project, which uh, was in the area that was formerly Oakport and is now part of the city of Moorhead. So those um, items tally up to $17.5 million. There are some potential future um, acquisitions in this area, but we don't know if those will ever come to fruition. So it's not the highest priority and we broke it into phases thinking that that would be, um, you know, uh, somewhat appealing to the legislature. So that's our bonding request. And the other items, uh, oh, and then before I leave the bonding request area, we have some things on the horizon. I mentioned the, um, the future voluntary acquisitions. Um, Moorhead Public Service has talked to us about some water infrastructure that's needed in the community, and we'll continue to work with them either through um, a potential bonding request in 2024 or possibly working with them to um, um, secure resources from a no or low interest loan program that the state has available for infrastructure. So more to, more to review and analyze before we would um, put that in as a formal request. And then another exciting thing that you might have heard a little bit about is that the nonprofit organization that is looking to bring a science museum to Fargo-Moorhead has begun some analysis and research on sites. And they are also very interested in the resources that the capital investment um, process in Minnesota may bring to them. The building you're in right now, the Yum Kump Center, was built with the aid of capital investment programming, as well as the Blue Stem Center for Performing Arts. So it's um, not out of the question. And as we talked about at the council meeting last week, it would be really fun to get out of the um, only infrastructure and move on to some things that bring amenities and joy 
to <laughs> to our community. So those are some things that are are on the horizon. I see a lot of agreement with that thought. So um, it would be really fun. And then um, also incredibly important to the work of our business community is the border city enterprise zone and disparity reduction programs that help to level the playing field between uh, Minnesota and North Dakota as it pertains to business and um, ensure that the tax base is um, still available to our local governments at the school district, the county, and at the city. And those programs, um, fortunately in 2019, were made part of, um, the Enterprise Zone was made part of the state's base budget. And so we need to ensure that they stay there. So there's no specific um, action uh, necessary beyond the monitoring, but the monitoring does become really important. And that is where it is really nice to have the um, legislative services that we have where folks in St. Paul are watching um, all priorities and all conversations to ensure that if there are questions by legislators or um, the administrative branch, that we answer those questions about why we need those resources. And so um, it, it, is, it is probably a light touch uh, moving forward, but it's also something that we have to be um, aware of and uh, ensuring the, the continuation of. And then the last item on this list is the border city issues of construction standards. And you may recall um, that we did not have success um, initially when we requested a change to the frost footing depth in uh, Moorhead and other border cities to match that of our North Dakota um, border cities. But we did have success following the legislative session. There was a lot of attention brought to this issue and a technical advisory group found another way. And so we do have the ability to have a, a more shallow cross footing depth that doesn't um, change safety standards. It is just using a different uniform code to achieve the same or better, actually better results than we initially had requested. So it does give builders that opportunity. And we'll be looking for more opportunities to do that with other standards where we know that there's not a compromise to safety or housing quality, but that can increase the affordability of construction in our community. So those are um, just some of the goals that we have as we enter into the 2022 legislative session. And so I could certainly answer any questions that you, or I could try to answer any questions that you might have. Um, and if you've heard enough, I'll just sit down. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, Deb. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just have two comments. One, uh, thank you, Lisa. And um, in regard to the public safety legislation, I was, I know, I know I touched on this and I just wanted to mention, I think, even um, beyond this particular piece of legislation is, you know, the more we can get out ahead of it, because I know from uh, our meeting with Flaherty and Hood, this public safety is going to be a big issue in the next, in the upcoming session. And so this is one piece of legislation, but there may be others. And so the more we can get out ahead and just tell them, hey, you know, we understand. And if you're looking at, um, you know, uh, proposing legislation regarding public safety, just please take some time to think about the impact that it has. Because, you know, um, rather than having the crisis happen and then trying to back up and figure out a solution, it would be great if they talked about that in conjunction with, particularly with the border cities, you know, of how we may be, um, uh, you know, disproportionately impacted because of the fact that we're a border community and then work at something, some legislation that actually wouldn't cause a, a, a crisis to begin with, it would be great. Um, and the other thing I wanted to say with the border city legislation uh, that we have, just to remind my, our fellow commissioners that that's another one, even just as you're talking to elected officials, you know, it's so great that it's in the base budget. We're so fortunate to have that and it's so important and just continue to thank them. And, you know, we don't want to take it for granted at all. And I know you don't, but it's, you know, we can be the ones that are also the champions of that too and reminding them how 
valuable that is. And so, you know, it's just a, uh, an easy thing that we can do in any time we're having contact with them. Thanks. Any other questions or comments? Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. That was very good. Moving on, um, I think I'll turn the introduction of this information about the preliminary budget over to either Amy or Derek. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, so in, in your packets, you will find a, a preliminary worksheet, a preliminary budget worksheet, which shows um, actuals in 2019, 2020, and 2021 to date. It also shows a, shows a column of uh, preliminary budget. Um, this board in August, at end of August, approved a prelim, uh, preliminary maximum levy, which shows at the top of the budget worksheet. And then further down in the column, you see that we've um, continued the budget pretty much at the same level as 2021. I would note that there are two primary changes to the budget. One is to the pro professional services line item, which includes an increase to the contract with Downtown Moorhead Inc. for Economic Development Services Citywide to recognize the growth and um, growing role that that organization and Derek provides to this um, organization. Also, there is an increase to the legislative services line item which includes an agreement with the federal lobbyist um, to identify and track federal appropriations for Moorhead specific projects. So that is in, in addition to our state lobbyists, we now have a federal lobbyist which is um, secured to watch for those um, federal projects. Um, the EDA's executive committee, which is um, which consists of the chair, the vice chair, and the secretary met virtually to discuss um, some of the details of this uh, pr uh, proposed budget. And um, I, would, I would be willing to, or I'd like to hear from those members. Um, but just one thing before I leave, uh, this, there is no action required in today's, for today's budget. Um, final approval can happen or will happen in December. So we have some time to, to meet and discuss. So I'll turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, anyone care to have any comments or questions? Uh, the purpose of, I think, this, this item is to discuss the preliminary budgets. Uh, during our meeting last week, we did discuss a few adjustments and um, I think I'll turn it over to Nate to, uh, to share that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah, so as we were, we were talking as an executive team looking at this, uh, you know, I think it's, it's evident that we're gonna have uh, some excess funds uh, that are going to uh, go back into reserves um, based on uh, the expenditures from 2021. Um, and also, the, you know, there's some I think some fluff built into some of these numbers that are proposed. Um, one thing that came up that I'd like to, to bring up is potentially looking at um, adjusting some of the numbers uh, toward the bottom of the page, um, the uh, contributions to the entities like West Central um, and more uh, MBA and potentially increasing, um, you know, increasing our participation uh, and our support of, of these partner organizations. Um, and but still keeping the keep, keeping the total number uh, the same. Uh, it sounds like Amy um, was enlightened us a little bit as far as, uh, and you can maybe provide some more detail, Amy, about uh, how we could reallocate a little bit of these funds. We don't uh, don't necessarily have to take on a larger budget, even though we it appears that we're operating well within um, the. Uh, the approved levy for sure, uh, while also you know keeping those the overall number about the same as 2021, um, so not causing any increased uh, burden on taxpayers uh, at all, and, and able to I think be even more effective with our dollars. Uh, Amy, would you be able to provide a little bit more detail on that? Yes, thank you, Nate. Um, so, be, 
you know, in due in part to the COVID pandemic, we haven't been spending all of um, our line item for um, like operating supplies. Um, that line item would cons um, include things like lunch for the EDA. Since we haven't been providing lunch recently, there'd be excess in that account. So I believe that there's ways, um, you know, to negotiate these numbers that would, that would uh, accommodate that increase. Uh, for, for instance, uh, you know, in, in terms of uh, what I might like to see happen, I think we could potentially make a motion um, here today and see if, see if we have uh, um, interest in, in that, but it would be like, uh, well, you see the, um, the West Central, the last item um, below the subtotal, the West Central SBDC um, amount that we given historically just $2,000, uh, you know, that could easily be uh, increased to potentially $5,000, let us say, um, as well as the, uh, the second to last item, the MBA, uh, which has historically been kind of st stagnant, about $10,000 contribution annually. Um, might like to see that uh, bumped up to like $15,000, let us say. Um, so I'm open to any, anyone else's feedback on on those not uh, so representing the MBA I would uh, you know say that the the 10,000 contribution that is historically there um, the the value that MBA provides uh, to Moorhead businesses even non MBA members uh, to all Moorhead businesses you know when the CARES Act funding was out there and and you know, municipalities, the, the county and the city were scrambling to figure out, uh, and not as an insult to either of those entities, but trying to figure out how to get businesses to apply and get money in the hands of the businesses that need it. I know Sherry and Nick were absolutely invaluable in that effort and many other and and trying to drive business growth and, and activity in Moorhead. So uh, I, the increase would be welcome. Uh, the MBA uh, we're not drowning financially, but we're not rolling in it either. Uh, the last couple of years have been in the red, uh, so the additional support would be very welcome. Uh, so on, on many levels, that would be, um, I think, a, again, a huge value for the city as far as an investment in an organization goes, and uh, be much appreciated from our end. Thank you. Yes. I had a question too related to that because and maybe I'd like to hear um, from Derek and Amy because I I see we we are currently giving 25,000 to the Greater Fargo Moorhead Economic Development Corporation and then 10,000 to MBA and I and I just think about in particular I think during this last year um, how invaluable that partnership was with MBA and um, so uh, you know in terms of your day-to-day interactions and the partnerships that we have, to me, that seems a little lopsided that there's such a huge disparity between the two. And if anything, I hear more about the work we're doing with MBA on, on this side of the river. And so if you wanna talk about that a little bit, that'd be great. Well, I'll, I'll just say, obviously, uh, what Nate has, has mentioned and obviously what James has mentioned, I mean, my partnership with, with Sherry has, has grown pretty deep over the last number of years uh, ever since she started and I've started with downtown Moorhead Inc. Um, I think our focus is solely the growth of Moorhead and, and seeing this place be successful and our businesses be successful. So certainly there's a strong partnership. I want to be respectful that obviously I think the, the contributions to the other organizations like the Greater Fargo Moorhead EDC and, and West Central Initiative, et cetera, I think have been fixed because that's been something that's been agreed upon or it's been an ask from those entities before. I mean, certainly, I think MBA and SPDC, SPDC has made an ask in the past. MBA, you can see, hasn't made an ask for, for quite some time. Uh, but I certainly think a, an increase is justified for the work that Sherry and Nick and the whole organization is doing. So um, I think if you were to adjust some of those other numbers, I think we'd, we'd want to have conversations with those entities. Um, or potentially create some type of arrangement of what the expectations are of, of what we want to see out of those organizations as well for that amount of contribution that's happening. So I, I know that's a little bit of a mixed answer, but hopefully that kind of gets to the point of it too. Thank you, Derek. I just want to add, um, 
As a uh, small business, I have had the opportunity to take advantage of the um, assistance offered by SBDC, and um, I'd like to do all that we can to encourage uh, their activity within the community. Uh, it's been invaluable, and they're always so willing to adjust their schedules to meet mine or, or uh, someone within my own organization. So I think they're doing a great job, and it seems like uh, we could do, do better uh, with that area as well. And I will say too with the SBDC, uh, obviously they are going through some transition of their leadership right now. Matt Magnus uh, has, has resigned. Um, Amy Anderson has kind of stepped up into that interim role, but they are looking to, to hire somebody or at least kind of go through an interview process. Um, I think we have tremendous opportunity to, to build on that foundation with SBDC. Uh, they serve a large territory, um, but they are housed right in their back backyard here in Moorhead, Moorhead and uh, Concordia's campus. And I know Sherry and I have talked a lot about this as well. Certainly Deb McGregor, that's re really out of the, the Bemidji area, has been a, a big advocate for us here. And I think having that strong uh, leader and hopefully have an ability to, to help the SPDC hire that person, I think will uh, only help us leaps and bounds, not only for us as an entire community, but uh, to Mike's point, to help all these individuals that are either in business or potentially starting a business within our community too. Thank you. Any further commentary, discussions? Yeah, Deb. I think this might be for Kat too, for a legal question. So, because uh, Commissioner Anderson mentioned we might consider a, a resolution to, uh, or a motion to change it, would, what would we have to do in terms of conflict of interest for those of us that are, for instance, MBA members? Is it, would that be something where we need to recuse ourselves? If you don't mind, since I have yes. the microphone, can Great. I have a drip? <laughs> the, uh, for, uh, first, just for anyone here or at home, SBDC stands for a Small Business Development Corporation. So they serve a region and really are there for new and emerging businesses and do all kinds of one-to-one -one work. They've got the score, pro any number of, of different uh, resources available. So. Um, and then I'm just really encouraged by the conversation by way of just talking about gaining momentum in some of these great organizations that have been doing so much ar around in the ecosystem of community and economic development in our community, which you can really see grow. And to both the Small Business Development Corporation and MBA especially, the positive momentum that just occurs weekly is just invaluable uh, in terms of building community and making neighborhoods strong and places where families can thrive and all of that good stuff. So. Um, uh, so, as, but as far as the, so we wanted to bring the budget to you today to just, you know, get it in front of you, give time to kind of uh, make sure everything was open and, and out there, and then the budget would be coming back, whatever we hear, we'd incorporate that into the uh, December 6th meeting, I believe it is, where the, where the final budget would be presented, and then that budget would be in front of the city council in, on December 13th. So. Um, certainly the motion is, makes it clear as crystal <laughs> as far as what you need, but even by way of advisory, the, the official action uh, will most likely happen on the 6th unless you'd like to approve that the budget today um, and then that would be done before that December 6th meeting. Um, as far as the conflict question, uh, what, you know what Kat, Do you, maybe I will turn that over to you. Yeah, yeah, I think, you know, because it's interesting, um, you would have been, had we not made any changes, you would have been voting on the budget already, you know, so maybe we could check in and get back to the, to the EDA, to the board on that. I, th I think that's a good idea, and it'll give uh, other board members here a chance to mull over our discussion uh, before we have to vote on it next month, so um, I would concur that we just delay a motion at this point. Yes. Uh, yeah, then I think that makes sense. Um, I'd probably say then that there's going to be work happening in the background on this preliminary budget then. And so for the, the members who will be at the December meeting, um, you know, the numbers might look a little bit different, uh, I'm guessing. Um, and so I'd say to be, just be prepared for that and we'll have more clarity on um, conflict of interest as well at that time. But we should be able to 
to approve that or vote on that at the December meeting. Thank you. Laura, do you have a comment? Well, just as we're, we're talking about um, if there's a little bit of wiggle room, just wanted to ask if, I mean, for Amy and Derek, maybe especially, is there anything that's not already on this budget that we may find some opportunity to add? I, I will say, I think there's some built-in flexibility that gives us some, some of that, um, um, well, that flexibility to do other things. I think right now, I think we felt, felt pretty well set with the budget the way it's established right now. Um, certainly we've had to evolve as <laughs> things have evolved within our community, but again, I think this budget gives us the most flexibility that doesn't set it into a certain category or, or line item that um, makes it very rigid. So I like the way it's designed right now to give us some flexibility. Great. Thank you. Yes. Any further discussion? Uh, I'll maybe just add one more that um, obviously with what we're hearing today, Amy can work with the finance department. We'll try to get those revisions made and then out to the full group as soon as possible, just so we have time to, to kind of have a full review on it too. And we're happy to answer questions or, or uh, go back and forth with folks too, to make sure we're depicting it the, crop, the, the proper way too. Thank you. Um, that will be very helpful. So moving on, item number nine, uh, Derek, you have the floor to talk about economic development. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'll just touch on a few items here. Um, Moorhead Center Mall, obviously that's been a, a point of conversations over the last couple of meetings. Um, we are planning a project kickoff uh, this week actually with our, our consultant firm, the consultant firm that, that Roars has ultimately brought on and that's uh, JLG, Stantec and Folkways. So that kickoff meeting will happen this week. Uh, so excited to kind of see how things unfold with that. Um, mentioned too, the, the former Days Inn hotel site, uh, Enclave has a purchase agreement to acquire that. We are working through uh, some, some site challenges there, but hopefully we can find a financial strategy to, to see that project move forward. Um, I think really exciting that uh, thing that happened last month is the Moorhead Career Academy. I, I think I mentioned this before. It, I think it's gone quiet uh, as far as some of the, the publicity leading up to it, but this is certainly a, a tremendous asset for Moorhead and, and certainly for the growth of our, our youth and our students here in the area, as well as I think the ability to have training opportunities to keep our workforce ahead of the game. So. Uh, it is officially open. They did a, a kind of a grand uh, celebration opening and, and tours on October 8th. Uh, I know many many of you were, were there. Uh, it's a large facility. The old Sam's Club has really been transformed. I hope you get an opportunity to, to go in there. I think there'll be more community tours uh, at some point in time, but I think the school district has done a, a really great job of transforming that area to, to really meet a lot of different needs. Um, I think there's room for growth in the partnerships and, and again, Sherry and I and others have had conversations about this as well. There's, there's a lot of uh, local businesses here that I think could not only take advantage of some of the equipment that's there, um, but really use it as a learning opportunity to train the next generation of, of workers and uh, potentially small business owners, you name it. So I think there's, there's opportunities to, to build very specialized classrooms or training opportunities for these students. Um, I think one opportunity that, that makes it unique is I have the, the honor of serving on the school district's champions committee, uh, as well as a, a number of different community leaders. Uh, but this really helps oversee and implement the, the career academy model. Uh, so that's where we can really make those matches for the community partnerships and make sure that we're providing the most sex successful, um, you know, really, career model and, and career path for these students as well. Um, you know, a couple other things worth noting, uh, Fargo-Moorhead Chamber of Commerce, they had their annual celebration on October 12th. Um, we also had the public co policy meeting where, where Lisa Bodie and Mayor Carlson and Chief Monroe uh, all touched on that use of force issue that was brought up earlier in the meeting. I think it was a good conversation to lay some, some groundwork and just an overall base level of understanding to a lot of the business leaders in this area. I think it's it's a message that we certainly want to control um, 
and, and make sure is truthful in nature because we don't want rumors being spread about about what that use of force challenge is. So I think Lisa and the mayor and, and Chief Monroe certainly did a great job in speaking at that that meeting. Um, Lastly, the only thing I'll mention is I had, I had an opportunity to attend the International Downtown Association's uh, annual conference in Tampa uh, mid-October. It was a great opportunity to, to kind of learn from, from peers and, and um, other communities and what they're working on. Uh, I, I came back with a really um, great sense that we're doing awesome things in Moorhead. I think the, the business community is, is strong here. Um, I think how we've handled the pandemic is something to be very uh, proud of. Um, I think it goes down to communication and working together and finding solutions. Um, even though there were some good examples of how communities have handled it at this conference, um, you could sense the challenges that, that they have because they didn't have that strong partnership that we have here in Moorhead. So that's something that I'm really proud of here and, and hope that we continue to work together to accomplish some, some big things for, for our community. So. With that, happy to answer any questions and thanks for the opportunity to share a few things. The only thing I'd like to add to that uh, in regard to the Career Academy, I'm seeing a lot of interest in this particular type of building uh, transformation across the state of North Dakota particularly. I'm sure it's happening in Minnesota, but the activity in eastern North Dakota has been phenomenal the last six months. So I, I think the Morehead schools were out in front of this big drive and it's going to have a really strong positive impact on the, the region. So I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, yeah um, as well, I wanted to add um, some kind of a testimony. So I had uh, at the Fargo Jet Center were among some of the employers that were kind of eager to have that career academy coming up. And I remember a couple weeks ago, I was talking with my VP and he said that one of our colleagues uh, is one of, I think, the instructor, I think uh, now over there. And it's just fascinating to be able to um, kind of be before those impressionable minds and tell them that, hey, that's a career you can consider maybe be I mean, aviation is so big, but we see now it's sometimes hard to recruit people nationwide, you know, to relocate here. Whereas if you can have those kids when they're still impressionable and still kind of in front of that wide array of career uh, before them, it's just, it's been phenomenal. And having one of our colleagues right in front of them, instructing them has been just, uh, I mean, still a l an adaptive and learning curve. It's, it's new for some of, some of us. Like that colleague, I think, has never really taught per se, but he's a really professional in what he does. So anyway, super grateful, but as well, highlighting again how it took many stakeholders to be at the table to do that, because school district, employers in the community, uh, the school itself, so you really kudos, so thank you. Yeah, I'm hopeful that maybe we can get uh, Brandon Lunick or somebody from the district to come in, maybe at our next meeting or, or in early in 2022, just to kind of give an overview of, of that facility. Because it, I think people in their mind, they, they think of just the really heavy manufacturing or auto mechanic type stuff. But really when you get in there, it's a whole different way of learning, right? It's, it's computer based, it's uh, very interactive. Uh, the culinary side of it is, is phenomenal. And, and uh, I really think there's opportunities, especially as, I'll just say the food industry has changed dramatically. Um, but even cooking tutorials, and uh, we're seeing some of our restaurants like Anna at Thai Orchid, who's done some out of our home kitchen, but you know, maybe there's an opportunity to bring her in there. Um, they got the cameras already set up. It's meant for that type of learning. Um, and she can use some of those video videos not only to help students, but, but use it for her business growth as well. So um, it'd be great to have somebody from the district come in and, and share a little bit more about the facility and, and some of those partnerships that they're working on as well. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Um, the last item on the agenda is uh, pertains to any any updates that you might be interested. Just check out the city's website for those. And uh, I don't know if Amy and Derek have or uh, um, have any more to add to what we've discussed today. Um, actually, I would like to just. Um, give a shout out to the SBDC. Um, they sent me a letter just recently and a value statement. And that value statement really gets into the meat and potatoes of what they do 
um, in their organization and around this region. So we have an opportunity just to kind of take a look at that and and um, and review what it is the good work that they are doing. Um, and I can I can say that Derek and I refer businesses to this valuable service, if not weekly, at least a few times a month, um, to get to get them that help that that you know we don't specifically provide so we do partner with them and and use them an awful lot so i appreciate appreciate lifting up that organization okay with that uh, i think we're adjourned thank you <laughs>